book of Jacob. Wherefore, I must tell you the truth according to the plainness of the word of God. For behold, as I inquired of the Lord, thus came the word unto me, saying, Jacob, get thou up unto the temple on the morrow, and declare the word which I shall give thee unto this people. And now behold, my brethren, this is the word which I declare unto you, that many of you have begun to search for gold and for silver and for all manner of precious ores, in the which this land, which is the land of promise unto you, and to your seed does abound most plentifully. And the hand of providence has smiled upon you most pleasingly, and you have obtained many riches, in, and because of s some of you have obtained more abundantly than that of your brethren, you are lifted up in the pride of your hearts, and wear stiff necks and high heads because of the costliness of your apparel, and persecute your brethren because you suppose that ye are better than they. Didn't I say that? And um, they're called, but they're not chosen. Didn't I say they wear their designer clothes and think they're better than you? Well, yesterday, the father took me to this book, and then he wants me to read it to you to see that this is in the word because I didn't know this. I didn't read this until yesterday, and now I'm reading it to you. So, and now, my brethren, do you suppose that God justifies you in this thing? So God doesn't justify people doing this, his children, because he knows they're in captivity now too, but they were doing that when they weren't. And now, my brethren, do you suppose that God justifies you in this thing? Behold, I say unto you, nay, but he condemns you. And if you persist in these things, his judgment must speedily come on to you. Oh, that he would show you that he can pierce you. And with one glance of his eye, he can smite you to the dust for your pride. Oh, that, remember, pride comes before a fall. And that he would rid you from this iniquity and abomination. So to do that, for the children of Israel to do that, it is iniquity and abomination for them to do that unto their brethren. And oh, that you would listen unto the word of his commands and let not this pride of your hearts destroy your souls. Think of your brethren like unto yourselves. Love your neighbor as yourself and be familiar with all and free with your substance. Give that you may be rich like that. They may be rich like unto you. If you if OK, you have a nation of people. You are a nation of people. You know they're in a condition where you can help your people get out of captivity. Shouldn't you help them? Are you just worried about helping yourself? Like, where is the land that you have for yourself, for your people? When has the Israelites all came together and said, let's buy a land? Let's, that never happened. When are you trying to make each other rich? No. You're rich for your house, and that's it. Because you were taught to fight against each other in slavery, it's been worse. Before, you were doing it because you wanted to lift up yourself before your brethren to think that you're better than them because of the pride of your heart. Now, you get paid to do it, and you people do it. You sell out for a piece of bread, your own brethren. Now, think of your... Think of your brethren like unto yourself, and be familiar with all and free with your substance, that they may be rich like unto you. But before you seek for riches, seek ye for the kingdom of God. Remember, if you seek the kingdom of God, all things will be added unto you. And after you have obtained a hope in Christ, you shall obtain riches, if you seek them, and you will seek them for the intent to do good, to clothe the naked, and to feed the hungry and to liberate the captives, and administer relief to the sick and the afflicted. That is what the Israelites who have money are supposed to be doing. Any of them who got rich, they were trying to help their people come out of captivity. They didn't do that, and they still don't do it. Every man at his corner worrying about his house. Some of them ain't even taking care of their own children. And after you have obtained a hope in Christ, you shall obtain riches. I wanted to say this, but it's I'm so happy it kind of goes into this scripture. A lot of people, they pray to God to bless them with money. They pray to God to bless them with riches and wealth. But here's the thing about that. 
if the father gives you this riches, this wealth, and this money, what are you going to do with it? You don't have the knowledge, the wisdom, and understanding on what to do with the money. We see that. Designer clothes, designer cars, and designer houses. You never used your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding on how to liberate your people. So God is looking at you like, I will not bless this man or woman with riches, with wealth. Because if I give it to them, they're not going to know what to do with it. They're not going to do good with it. They're not going to help anyone with it. That is why... Some of you have been praying to God for like 20, 15 years. Father, make me rich. Father, make me wealthy. Father, make me have money. And you ain't getting that from God. Because if you get it, you'd become more worse than you already are without it. And you wouldn't do good with it. You would be your own man and woman to yourself in your own corner. And you wouldn't be worried about your people. And God told you to love your neighbor as yourself. And God told you to love your nation. He told the Israelites to love their nation, clothe their brother. If they see one naked, help their brother. If they see one hungry, they don't do that. So they cannot be praying and asking God to give them riches and wealth. He won't do that. Because first, he told you to ask for wisdom. If God gives you this riches and wealth, where is your wisdom to know what to do with it? Seek the kingdom of heaven first, then all things shall be added unto you. God is not going to give you wealth and riches and you don't know what to do with it. If you're going to do evil with it, that is why people sell their soul to Satan and get rich quick. Because God doesn't do that. He blesses his children with wisdom, with riches, so because he knows they're going to do good with it. That is why a lot of you, you won't be rich. And it's the truth. You won't be wealthy because God knows your heart and your mind exactly what you're going to do. You will not liberate your people. Look at your celebrities. Look at your singers. Look at all the people with money. They will not liberate you because how did they get their riches? They didn't get it from God. They don't have the wisdom on how to help their people. They are planned. Listen, those are house niggas. Same way, same behavior to this day. Because they won't liberate their people. They're all about their self. Just like on the plantation. They were worried about their self. Now. And after you have obtained a hope in Christ. You shall obtain riches if you seek them. And you will seek them for the intent to do good. To clothe the naked. And to feed the hungry. And to liberate the captives. And administer relief to the sick and the afflicted. They don't help the afflicted and the captive. They know their people are still in captivity. And now, my brethren, I have spoken unto you concerning pride and those of you which have afflicted your neighbor and persecuted him because you were proud in your hearts of the things which God has given you. Which, What say ye of it? Do you not suppose that such things are abominable unto him who created all flesh? And the one being is a precious and the one being is as precious in his sight as the other. And all flesh is of the dust. And for the same, for the self same end has he created them, that they should keep his commandments and glorify him forever. And now I make an end of speaking unto you concerning this pride. And were it not that I must speak unto you concerning a grosser crime, my heart would rejoice exceedingly because of you. But the word of God burdens me because of your grosser crimes. For behold, thus says the Lord, this people begin to wax in iniquity. They understand not the scriptures. Didn't I say that? They, they don't. I see people on YouTube. They don't even know what they're talking about at all. I'm like, my goodness, that's not what that means. They need to fast and pray and ask God. They can't just be making up the scriptures and making up their own interpretations. They understand not the scriptures, for they seek to excuse themselves in committing whoredoms. They do, because of the things which were written concerning David and Solomon his son. Didn't I tell you God was displeased with King Solomon? And look how a couple of months ago he made me make that video for you when I was 
because like um in the winter time last year i was reading nathan the prophet and i read about all of king solomon's abominations before god and all his wickedness before to his people and to his wives and to his concubines and how wicked king solomon was and that they only put the part in the King James Bible about him having 700 concubines and 300 wives. And you understand, and they know that. And men cop, they're like, they want to have children like Solomon. They even make King songs about King Solomon, right? But God is displeased with King Solomon. And he was displeased with what David did. So, and they think it because they were kings that they're okay to do that and god said no this is this is called a grosser crime for their iniquity trying to be like solomon saying they can have more than one wife well let's keep reading behold david and solomon truly had many wives and concubines which thing was abominable before me that's what god said i did not read this till right now because i was just going to read you about the pride but this is good, so I'm going to read the rest of this. Um, Behold, David and Solomon truly had many wives and concubines, which thing was abominable before me, says the Lord. Now, I know this is totally true because um, remember a couple months ago when God made me make that video about King Solomon, he told me that he's displeased with King Solomon and he's supposed to have one wife. And all those men of Israel are wrong. No sister wives, no sister, none of that. One flesh, Adam and Eve, one of one. God knows that will cause jealousy and strife. He wouldn't give you two wives. And I explained to you what happened with Jacob, with Leah and Rachel. You can go look at that video when God made me explain that to you. His, his destiny was altered, and God still blessed him. Wherefore, thus says the Lord, I have led this people forth out of the land of Jerusalem by the power of my arm, that I might rise up unto me a righteous branch from the fruit of the loins of Joseph. Wherefore, I, the Lord, God will not suffer that this people shall do like unto them of old. Wherefore, my brethren, hear me and hearken to the word of the Lord. For there shall not any man among you have, save it be one, save it be one wife. What did God tell you to have one wife? Don't listen to new breed. And concubines, he shall have none. Let me read this again for the slow in the back. For there shall not any man among you have, save it be one wife. And concubines, he shall have none. Concubines, none. Mm -mm. One wife. Concubines are illegitimate women and, and their children are illegitimate children before God. You better go pray about that. For I, the Lord God, delight in the chastity of woman and whoredoms are an abomination before me. Thus says the Lord of hosts, baby father, baby mother. Eh -eh. Not happening before God. Con that's a concubine. A baby mother is a concubine. And I don't even like that word, baby mother. Those sound like damn gangster words to me. Wherefore, this people shall keep my commandments, says the Lord of hosts, or curse be the land for their sakes. So this is why the Israelites have been cursed. And this is why white media promotes baby mothers, baby fathers, and all those type of things. Can you not see that? Because of them. They want baby mothers. Which other nation you see doing baby mother, baby father like them? Mm -mm. Ask the, Ch the Chinese man's not doing it. He has a wife. Even the white man. Mm -mm. The Indian man not doing it. You only to curse yourself for you to have no land. So because you want concubines and you said it's okay. You can have sister wives. This is your destruction. You're in so much whoredoms. You have so much soul ties. You're a mess. For if I will, says the Lord of hosts, rise of seed unto me, I will command my people. Otherwise they shall hearken unto these things. For behold, I, the Lord, have seen the sorrow and heard the mourning of the daughters of my people in the land of Jerusalem because of you men, which your baby mothers and your concubines. Yeah, and in all the lands of my people because of the wickedness and abomination of their husbands. 
Yeah, you Israelite men. So stop lying about you're supposed to have more than one wife. I even told you that even a year ago when I was walking and talking and explaining some things about soul ties to you. I mean, one of my subscribers who remembers that video, link it down below so you can watch it. This is real. You cannot stand before God with more than one wife and God ain't talk. God ain't dealing with your concubines, just like you women. God ain't dealing with your baby fathers. You should have a husband. He doesn't like whoredom. That's whoredom. And I will not suffer, says the Lord of hosts, that the cries of the fair daughters of this people, his beautiful daughters of this people, and he was talking about daughter Zion because her husband did wickedly, which I have led out of the land of Jerusalem, shall come up unto me against the men of my people, says the Lord of hosts. For they shall not lead away captive the daughters of my people because of their tenderness, save I shall, save I shall visit them with a sore curse. Don't you see these men, these, these black men always getting shot down in the street? They don't know what curse is on them because they're whoredoms from their little boys. Oh, how much girlfriends they have. If they break up with one girl, they're gone to a next girl. Some of them have five girls, three girls at one time. They're full of sin and soul ties. So you know, your mind, their mind is messed up. Their emotions, their affections, their feelings, their thoughts, their soul, their spirit, their flesh. They're battling with so much. Because when you're sleeping with somebody, it's a transfer of spirits. That's why you're only supposed to sleep with your wife. And God, you, you guys become one flesh and God is over you. You guys become one flesh. But when you're doing that thing, that sacred thing with other people, what do you think that's doing to you? That'll destroy you. You're only supposed to do it with your wife. It's not sin and those, and those spirits won't come on you. But when you're doing it with anyone else, whatever spirits they're carrying, you're going to start carrying it. And worse, if you're sleeping with more than one person, do you know how destroyed you are? Now, for they shall not lead away captive the daughters of my people because of their tenderness. Save, God saying, because of the women are nice. It, these women, the black women are tender. He's not making them do this to his daughters. Save, I shall visit them with a sore curse, even unto destruction. He's going to destroy these men, both baby mother and all this nonsense. And leave and this gal and that girl. For they shall not commit whoredoms. Like unto them of old, says the Lord of hosts. And now behold, my brethren, you know that these commandments were given to our fathers. Lehi, wherefore you have known them before. And you have come unto great condemnation. For you have done these things which you ought not to have done. You want to know why some of the books didn't make it in the, Bi the King James Bible? It's because these people of Israel were doing these whoredoms. And they didn't want people to know. You think it was white people who first started taking out books out of the Bible? No, it was the Israelites because of their pride. Ask the Father. It was them. Behold, you have done greater iniquities than the Lamanites, our brethren. You have broken the hearts of your tender wives and lost the confidence of your children because of your bad examples before them. And the sobbings of their hearts is sent up to God against you. And because of the strictness of the word of God, which comes down against you, many hearts died, pierced with deep wounds. How many of the fatherless dads, fatherless children, motherless moms? How many of those children have they broke their heart? You know how, many, how many stories you see? And, oh man, I, I grew up without my dad. I grew up without my mom. This is what God said. They've done to those children hearts and their Christ came up before him and he judging them man and them woman. They thought they were getting away with it. They can do baby mother, baby father, concubines. Listen how the word sounds, concubines. That sounds good to you. Over a wife, God is not dealing with concubines and God is not dealing with your whoredoms. Repent. Repent.